Well, folks, welcome to James Hill Sports. We are joined by Terry Sims. He is the head football coach of the Bethune-Cookman University Wildcats. First and foremost, coach, I hope you and your family and everybody in Daytona are safe and sound. Doing great. Everybody's doing great. I hope the same with you. Thank you, sir. Coach, talk a little bit about your football program. Obviously, uh, when it's all said and done, gentlemen walk across the stage, they shake hands, and they have a degree in their hand, and they are winners in the game of life. Yeah, I, I think that's what it's all about. And that's why they call them student athletes. Uh, you know, it's all about education first. Uh, it's something that we preach here every day. Uh, it's your education, it's your life experience, you know, and then football comes. If we talk to our guys and all we teach our guys is football, then we're wrong. Uh, we talk to them about everyday life. We talk to them about being successful. And, you know, being successful in the classroom, it's a, you know, it's a direct reflection of our program, of our coaches, uh, of what we stand for in our in our program. So education is important. Uh, we all understand they're, they're, they're here playing football, but football is just a vehicle to get their degree. Coach, the Bethune-Cookman, the Wildcats way, uh, every time I'm on campus and I go into the athletic center, I see there's so many trophies. There's even trophies on the floor. Can you talk uh, about that tradition and that legacy and why it's so important to go out there and give it your all? Well, it's a standard here. And, you know, every young man that's been through this program, uh, whether it's a coach or a player, understands that we do things a certain way. Uh, you know, winning is important around here, but it's, it's winning, you know, in, in all avenues of your life, you know, in your, your personal life, your social life, uh, your academic life, and your athletic life. We, we make sure that we preach that every day. Uh, our guys understand there is a standard. Uh, we, we had a little setback this past season uh, for, for a lot of different reasons, but we don't make excuses. You know, everyone here understands we just got to get back to work and, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, you know, we don't complain because if you're complaining, you're not working. Coach, uh, HBCU football has a proud historic tradition. Uh, we've watched or we've uh, read about it when we weren't around. Uh, it's been around since the 1800s. Can you talk about being a part of the HBCU family? And again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, go through those respective programs. And when it's all said and done, they leave with degrees. And it's not just a four or five year thing. It's, it's a lifetime thing. Talk a little bit about the HBCU experience, if you will. Well, I don't think it's anything like it. Uh, you know, I've, I've coached at PWIs. I've coached at, at, at HBCU. So uh, not anything like it. The atmosphere, you know, is unbelievable. And I'm not just talking about game day. I'm talking about everyday life on, on a HBCU campus. It's different. It's, it's like, you know, walking around campus, going to class with, with, with family. You know, everybody's in tune with everyone. Uh, it, it's just, a, a, I think, a, a family atmosphere that's hard to explain. But uh, it, once you've been on HBCU campus, once you've taken part in activities on HBCU campus, you understand that there's nothing like it. Uh, you, you leave with experiences and, and uh, memories that will last your lifetime. Uh, whether you're an athlete or you're just a student, uh, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's involved. Everyone's in tune with what's going on on HBCU campuses. Coach, uh, we have covered you in the MEAC, and, and now we've even covered you in the SWAC. But talk a little bit the, uh, about the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Again, it's a powerful conference. And, uh, you know, it kind of sets a standard for uh, HBCU football along with the MEAC because both programs and both conferences meet every year in Atlanta. And everyone is looking at, at uh, both of those programs and conferences. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And, and you know, I've had the opportunity to coach in both conferences. Uh, actually coached in the SWAC before I uh, coached in the MEAC. So had an opportunity to be a part of this conference before excited to be back uh didn't didn't you know didn't disappoint me at all a lot of great football 
coaches in this league, a lot of great football players, a uh, lot of historical universities here uh, in this league. And, you know, it shows up every every Saturday or, or if you're lucky enough, every Thursday night on game day. Uh, so when, when you look at the, the conference, you look at the competition, uh, you look at the platform that's being developed for these student athletes, it, it's unbelievable. And it's something I think that's going to continue to grow and we'll, we'll have a product here uh, soon, very soon, that will be hard to be matched. Coach, the annual spring game took place uh, weeks ago. Can you talk about the spring game, what that was like to get an opportunity to see some of the guys get out on the field and give the fans out there a flavor of Wildcats football going forward and an update on, on some of the gentlemen you have there in your program now? Uh, it was great. It was great having, having, you know, an opportunity for the guys to get out and actually, uh, you know, interact with the fans first and then actually go out and showcase their skills uh, during the spring game. It was great. You know, we, we have uh, Jalen Jones, a quarterback, a transfer coming in, uh, Kamari Averett. We, we have him back. We have Quayshawn Bird back, uh, Marcus Riley. Jonathan Thomas, all those guys have made a lot of plays for this program and they'll be back on offense. You know, defensively, we have Judas McKenzie at defensive tackle, uh, Reginald Pearson. We, we have Omar Hill Robinson at corner, uh, Uriah Ratliff at safety. And uh, we, we also have Caleb Sutherland, a guy that transferred in last year from the MAC uh, and played for us. So we have some guys that are, that are in here now that, that are going to continue to make plays and continue to I think make this university and this program proud. Coach, the, the transfer portal, uh, as it were, is busting out of the seams. Uh, and then also you look over at uh, the concept of NIL, uh, name and likeness and the opportunity there for players. Can you talk about both of those two aspects? Say it one more time. The uh, name and likeness, uh, those opportunities for young uh, athletes, and then also you look at the transfer portal and what that can mean yeah, going I, I, forward. You know, I, I think I think NL uh, um, or NIL uh, NIL deal is is great for a lot of student athletes. It, it'll uh, I think it's going to prove huge for some guys, the guys that that are chosen to be a part of that. Uh, it, it's good. Uh, you know, the young men are now allowed to uh, be compensated for their name and likeness. And I don't think it, there's anything wrong with that. As long as it's governed, I, I think it, it's good. You know, the transfer portal, a lot of people are making a lot of great moves in the transfer portal. It's here. It's here to stay. Uh, you just have to make sure you're managing it the right way and, and make sure you're a part of the, the good side of the, of the portal. And, and I think uh, if you look at it that way, it could be really, really good for your program. Now, Coach, I followed your program and covered your program for years. Uh, when I look at the schedule, I see a game that I actually covered in years past. It's uh, the Wildcats at the U, University of Miami, uh, September 3rd, down at Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, can you talk about going out on the road and playing a game like that early in the season? Uh, it's great. And I, I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it. It's a measuring stick for your program. And uh, we, we look at it just that way. We look at it as, as an opportunity to go play another school in Florida, FBS school in the state of Florida. And, and it will give our, our team a measuring stick uh, early on. And it also helped to increase our game speed uh, as we move toward conference play. Coach, uh, week two, uh, you look at actually September 10th, you look at uh, South Carolina State University, the Bulldogs, the defending Celebration Bowl champions, Coach Buddy Pugh. And there's a rivalry there from the old MEAC when we look at Bethune and South Carolina State, uh, teams along the uh, south, uh, the eastern seaboard, if you will. But talk a little bit about uh, the rivalry and uh, when you look over and you see the Bulldogs ready to play football. We, we know it's always going to be a football game. Before we even travel there or they travel here, you know it's going to be a a, a, a hard-nosed football game. It's going to be a long football game, uh, and it, it's going to be an exciting football game. 
Uh, we had a, a, a deal going probably eight, nine years ago where for four straight years, they came here and beat us. We went there and beat them. Uh, you know, nobody could win at home. So, you know, those are, are real rivalries. Those are real games that, you know, people come out to see because they're games that are going to be competitive from the start to the finish. Uh, really enjoy it. Coach Pugh is, you know, Buddy Pugh's been a mentor of mine for a long time. Uh, have shown, you know, he has shown me a lot of good things in this business. Uh, have, have shared some brutally honest things with me in this business to help me as a coach and help me as a man. So uh, just love what, what, what he's done with his program. He, he's continuing to do. Uh, and I look for a lot more out of that program, you know, in the near future. Coach, will you look at uh, September 24th, uh, GSU, the G-Men, Grambling State University will make their way into Daytona Beach and uh, play you guys over at the Municipal Stadium. Can you talk about Grambling State, what you see there? Coach Jackson is coming in and obviously Coach Robinson, the legacy, uh, anytime you see Jackson, anytime you see a uh, Grambling State University football team. Yeah. Uh, I, I think when you look at Grambling, you know, we had a, I had the opportunity to go there last year and end up beating them there. Uh, it, it's a historic program. We had an opportunity to tour the, the museum there, Eddie Robinson Museum, uh, had an opportunity to uh, just take in the, the Grambling experience. Uh, it was great for our players to see so much history uh, there with that, that, you know, football program and what Coach Robinson did there. Uh, historic university, well-known university. The G is, you know, worldwide. Uh, and, and I think Coach Jackson has done a great job as, you know, with the little time he's been there. And we look for him to come in here and for it to be a great, exciting football game this year. Coach, when you get into October, to be exact, October 1st, it's at Alabama A&M University, Coach Maynard and those gentlemen there, uh, Mr. Glass has moved on. He's uh, taking his talents to Tampa Bay, if you will, and trying to stick uh, and live his dream in the NFL. But talk about uh, going into Alabama A&M. And obviously last year, uh, you went toe to toe with that ball club. And then there was some weather that came into Daytona. But talk about going on the road and again, playing a, a very talented football program. Uh, it, it's, it's great watching, you know, that football program develop and them coming in last year and, you know, being the, the spring champs, it was, it was a great opportunity for us to, you know, showcase ourselves with our first uh, SWAT game. It was, it, it was a monsoon uh, that we played in, but it was a great football game. Uh, I, I thought both teams played well for the conditions. We just, you know, didn't come out on top in that one. But uh, it, it was it was great, you know, playing, watching Glass play, you know, his last season and understanding that we were uh, the first contest he had uh, in the in the conference uh, of his last year. And, you know, just having an opportunity because Coach Maynard and I are great friends. We've been friends for a long time, uh, had an opportunity. We coached against each other when he was at Hampton. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of history there with him. Um, and and I, I think when you look at his program, you see what a, a class football program looks like. Coach, October 8th, uh, you go on the road to a historic school, uh, Tennessee State University, uh, Eddie George, and that particular program. Again, talk about going on the road, uh, two iconic programs when you look at Bethune, and you also look at Tennessee State University, and you see that gentleman there, that Heisman, uh, Mr. George. Well, I, I think first and foremost, you know, Eddie and I have had a, a few conversations uh, after he took over, and you know, he he knew he had a, a challenge ahead of him, uh, stepping into his first head coaching role and uh, developing a program and running a program. I think it's going to be great to stand across the field and match wits with those guys and, you know, see what happens. I know we'll be ready to play. Uh, I'm sure he'll have his football team ready to play. And, and it'll be, you know, a little different because, again, you know, the, the 
former head coach there, Coach Reed and, and myself, we're great friends, been friends for a long time. So not seeing him across the other side or talking to him at pregame will be a little different, but we're excited to go down. I'm excited for Coach George and, uh, you know, his staff and the things they're trying to do. And we're just looking forward to making the trip to Nashville and seeing what happens. Coach, October 15th at Daytona Beach, uh, you look at Jackson State University, the Tigers. They'll come in. Uh, it's Coach Prime, Shador, uh, Shiloh, and all the guys coming in out of out of Jackson State. When you think about that particular contest, and the last time you played Jackson State, or or ac actually in years past, I remember covering that game in Atlanta. But you know, this is a whole new situation. But just talk a little bit about Jackson State, and they'll be in here October fifteenth, and and obviously uh, they're they're trying to play at a high level. Well, you know, they are, and they'll bring a lot of, you know, the fanfare and everything will come with them, and that's part of it. Uh, that's where their program is right now. Uh, one, one thing about it, it's a football game. We all have to go on the field and play, uh, and that's what we're looking at. We're, we're, we can't be uh, mesmerized by the things that are going on around us. We have to make sure we take care of business between the lines, and that's what we're, we're, we're talking to our guys about, and that's what we're focused on. Coach, October 22nd, it's a Saturday. Uh, you look at going into the Valley of Scholars in Itabina, Mississippi, at the Mississippi Valley State University for, versus Coach Dancy and the Delta Devils. Um, take us on the road, uh, Highway 82, the Flatlands, going in there and playing a football game. Hey, tough place to play. Uh, you know, we went in a couple years ago and played them, and uh, we end up beating them there in, in a dog fight. And they actually came here last year and beat us on homecoming. Uh, and, and the, you know, last few minutes of the game, we did not capitalize on a couple opportunities and they won the football game. My hat goes off to coach Dancy. I remember him when he was playing, uh, you know, at Jackson and it, I watched him do a lot of good things on the field. So I'm proud of him. I tell him that every time I see him, he's doing a great job with that program. And again, it's another one of the games that we're looking forward to uh, because it's going to be a contest for us to be able to show folks that, that you know, we're, we are still the Wildcats and we are going to, we're going to still play a hard nose, fast, tough brand of football. And we're going to do whatever we have to do to make sure we get it done. Coach, uh, October 29th at Prairie View A&M University. It's one of the furthest points when we look at the SWAC. Uh, you get into Texas, out west, if you will, the Houston area. Um, and Dooley is no longer there. He has moved on to Mumford, and he's with Southern. Um, but talk a little bit about Prairie View. And obviously, uh, that's a football program, and, and they're like everybody else. They're ready to play on Saturdays. They are, you know, and the head coach there now, uh, you know, Coach McDowell, you know, Bubba actually uh, started out working with us at Texas Southern. When, when he got into coaching, he, he was working, you know, at Texas Southern with us and did a great job there. And he's been at Prairie View, I think about 12 years now, served his time there and he got his shot. Uh, excited for him, uh, excited to, to go and uh, line up against those guys and, and see what they have. We know they're going to be ready to play. He has a great staff he put together and they're going to have the guys prepared. Coach, November 5th, Saturday, uh, homecoming, uh, Alabama State University comes in, the Hornets, they'll come into Daytona, uh, a coach who had take, taken over the team uh, halfway through the season last year, brand new athletic director, and again, uh, the Hornets are trying to sting anybody who gets in front of them. Can you talk a little bit about the Alabama State University game? Yeah, again, you know, uh, another new coach, but uh, I've been knowing uh, Eddie Robinson a long time, uh, you know, and, and he's a guy that's, you know, detailed. He, he's a guy that's, he's a careful thinker. He, uh, he's going to try and make sure he has everything lined up uh, before anything happens. So we just have to make sure we're on our P's and Q's. Again, he, he put together a great staff. Uh, I know those guys are working. They've been out recruiting. They've been hitting the transfer portal. They're trying to, you know, redesign that team. So again, uh, another home game for us. We, we went to 
Montgomery last year. We dropped that game. So we, we have to make sure we're, we're ready to go this year when they come in here so we, we can end up on the other end of the scoreboard. Coach, uh, last year you were successful against uh, Alcorn State University. Uh, this year you will see Alcorn November 12th. Uh, Saturday at the reservation in Lorman. Uh, you'll take that ride down 61. You'll take that turn, go up that hill and come in. And when you look to the right, that stadium will be right there and it'll be packed. You can smell the barbecue and you can see the marching band. Uh, but talk a little bit about that particular game against the Braves. And you look at the history and the legacy of that program. And then also uh, historic family uh, with the quarterbacks who have come through that particular program with the McNair family. Right. And, and you know, Fred, the, the head coach there now, Coach McNair, sometimes he gets overshadowed because, you know, uh, of Steve, you know, God rest his soul. And that, that Steve was a great quarterback there, great quarterback in the league. But uh, what a lot of people don't realize, the fans of today, Fred was the first Eric McNair. Uh, you know, he, he was the guy that was lighting it up years before that. Uh, very, very good football player, great football coach, and, and a guy that, that really understands his program, his, his team, his university, and what it takes to win there. And we know that it's going to be a dogfight when, when we walk in there this year because uh, we beat them here last year. And, and, you know, they have us at home this year. So they're definitely going to go in, uh, I know, and try to get a win. So we got to make sure that we're prepared and, and we're ready to go when we step on that field because it's a crazy atmosphere to play in. Coach, and finally, uh, the Florida Classic. Uh, you'll see FAMU November 19th. That's a Saturday in, October, in, in November. Uh, right before Thanksgiving, and, and they come from all over the country, uh, and they go into Camping World Stadium, and they want to see this game. Talk a little bit about the rivalry there and uh, the Florida Classic, and, and obviously Bethune and FAM, and it's a fan's treat. Well, you know, that, that, that Classic, really, you don't really have to talk about it. It's something that's been going on for a long time. Uh, it's a classic where the records are out the window uh, and, and everyone's showing up to see the show, to, to see the Wildcats, you know, play the Rattlers. And uh, again, the, the tailgating atmosphere is crazy outside. Uh, so I've heard uh, the, the, you know, the bands are, are electric. The atmosphere from the fans in the stadium is great. You know, I, I think, you know, Florida Citrus Sports, they do a great job with setting up the, the, the whole game and putting on the show. So it's just an experience that if you have not seen it, you have to show up and experience the Florida Classic. Coach, the uh, SWAC championship game uh, pits uh, both winners from both divisions against each other. Talk about uh, the SWAC championship. And, and again, everybody is trying to get there. Everybody's trying to get there and everybody's trying to do whatever they can with recruiting, with hiring coaches, with running their programs, setting their programs up to make sure that they get to that SWAC championship game because that's the, the, the door before you, you, you open it, before you can open that door to go to the Celebration Bowl. So uh, it's something that we're all fighting and, and clawing and scratching for, and it's going to be an exciting season this year. Coach, you just alluded to it, the Celebration Bowl, the ATL, Atlanta. It's the SWAC and the MEAC, two champions getting together uh, to hoist that trophy and claim uh, the best in the land. Can you talk a little bit about that game and, and why the Celebration Bowl is so special? Well, because number one, it's the first bowl game played. And, and I think when you look at it, uh, it's something that it, I think it caught a lot of people by surprise that we're not, you know, in the HBCU circle when they actually watch the game on TV and they, they watch the product that was on the field. Uh, it's something that, you know, HBCU football has been needing for a long time. We've had a few bowl games that kind of fizzled out, but this one has been around for a few years now, and it seems like it's just going to continue to grow. 
coach. Uh, and finally, uh, playoffs. There's opportunities for FCS teams to move on. Uh, FAM went into the playoffs last year, but uh, there's opportunities for teams to advance and, and play in the playoffs. Can you talk a little bit about that and, and how special that can be for HBCU uh, programs to get in there and represent and compete uh, on a national level on that type of stage? Well, uh, hold on, I'm, uh, you cut out a little bit, I think. Coach, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about the opportunity to play on the FCS level um, on the uh, championship stage uh, and represent HBCU. And, and you might play uh, North Dakota or Sam Houston or, or James Madison or, or whoever it is, a PWI, but it's about football and playing at a high level. Can you talk about playoff opportunities? Playoff opportunities are great. And I think, you know, we've had an opportunity here uh, three times to play in the playoffs and have an opportunity to see that. And it's something, you know, it's experience that's great for the players, great for the fans just to be a part of that. So I think it's great having that opportunity. And uh, I know that along with the Celebration Bowl, a lot of teams are fighting for that. Coach, in closing, are there any final comments, anything you want to tell the uh, Wildcats Nation as they tune in and get an update? Uh, they're hungry and they can't wait to see you guys this fall. Well, I, I just, I, I think, you know, the first thing I'll tell our fans is continue to stick by us. They have been, they're great fans. We're looking forward to coming back this year and putting a product on the field that you guys can definitely be proud of. Coach, uh, you have an athletic director there that's one of our favorite basketball players uh, and Mr. Uh, Reggie Theus. Can you talk a little bit about working with that gentleman? And again, uh, he's a basketball icon and now he's a uh, part of the HBCU family. Uh, I, I think it's great. You know, working with, with, with Coach Theus is great. He's been great. You know, he's helped me out a lot. He doesn't, you know, like some coaches say, their AD is getting in the way. He doesn't get in the way. He doesn't bother me. All he does is ask me what I need, and he tries to be there to assist me however he can. So I, I think it's been great so far. Uh, don't have any gripes or complaints. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's just not the way we handle business around here. But, you know, if I have to say anything, he's been helpful. He's been there for me. He's been there for my program, uh, involved in our recruiting weekends and anything else that we ask him to do. So uh, just happy to have him here and hope, hopefully we continue to grow. Coach calling all Wildcats uh, September 3rd, uh, South Florida, the big stage. Uh, you play the Hurricanes. Any final comments going forward as you think about that game and, and inviting all the fans to come on out and watch? I am just waiting everybody to come out and see. I, I, you know, I just said it before, we're going to put a great product on the field. Uh, we're just excited to get started and, and, and start preparing and make sure that we give our fans something to stand on. Well, folks, there you have it. He is Terry Sims, the head football coach of the Bethune-Cookman University Football Wildcats. I'm James Hill. You're watching James Hill Sports, and we will be right back. <laughs> 